Talia, you work in social neuroscience. Uh, past decades, that would seem almost a contradiction because neuroscience is very individually oriented, at right. least when I was doing my doctoral work. Um, so what, what is the new science of, uh, of social neuroscience? Well, social neuroscience recognizes that the brain, the human brain, uh, evolved largely to process the social world. We have a very complex fluid social networks and we have to navigate the social world um, and there's some theories that that led to or at least associated with prefrontal cortex expansion that we are the most social species and so social neuroscience is interested in taking that as the principle like how did the brain evolve to navigate the social world and so what are some specific areas of research in social neuroscience so that we can see the, the uh, detailed science, but then understand how it helps us understand our social relationships in light of the brain? Right. Well, um, much of social neuroscience is about uh, showing people stimuli while they're, say, lying in a brain scanner and they're seeing other people's faces, maybe people they know, seeing what the neural response is to familiar others. How do we think about people? How do we understand their intentions and emotions? I mean, it's not, in, it's, as a science, it's still at, at the beginning stages. Really what we want to take it, where we want to take it to eventually is to understand how the brain works um, in a social environment. Right now we're limited by our tools, right? We're lying supine in a noisy mm. tube as individuals and we're being flashed pictures mm. of our significant others. That's very different from real social interaction. So the goal of the field is to move from that to something where we're actually having a conversation. Mm. Mm. Now, what are some specific experiments that you've done? My lab specifically is really interested in human social intelligence and how human social intelligence evolved to um, harness these evolutionarily older computations that we inherited from rats and frogs and monkeys. So we've shown, for example, recently that um, the same mechanisms that allow us to um, understand that, you know, that you're relatively near to me, but the building over there is far <laughs> further away, that we repurpose that ancient distance computation to understand our social world. So the brain pattern that activates when I process something near to me is the same brain pattern that activates when I see a picture of a close friend. Mm. And the brain pattern that activates when something's far away from me is similar to the brain pattern activated by an acquaintance or a stranger. So we map our social world onto a sense of physical space. Mm. So we, all over the brain you see this sort of repurposing of ancient computations to handle a more sophisticated, complex social world. It's a fascinating experiment. What, what are the specifics of, of that particular experiment where you translate something that's purely geographical and spatial yes. into something that's content-oriented and degrees of meaning? Well, what we did was we, um, while people were laying in, a, in an fMRI scanner, they saw objects that looked either that they were close to them or further away from them. And we also showed them pictures of their friends and acquaintances and also phrases like now and later. And what we found is that you can train a computer to recognize the brain pattern for when something looks like it's close to you and the brain pattern that's different for something that looks further away from you and train a computer to recognize near versus far and then give the computer all the other trials when they were actually not seeing things close and far away, but they were seeing friends, acquaintances, words like now and later. So in, in, in one case, you're using it spatially where you yeah. see something oh, close right. and something far. And in another sense, you're translating that metaphorically to where the close and far is, 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 is in a content uh, semantic understanding of it. That's right. Um, but it isn't just metaphor because it's the same physical distance computation that seems to be, I mean, this is why we talk about That's close friends yeah. or yeah. he seems distant today yeah. or yeah. the near future. Yeah. The reason why those things are popping up in our language is that they echo the machinery involved, mm. right? Mm. We actually are using these ancient physical distance computation to understand these abstract concepts like time and friendship. And so what, um, what's the significance of that? Well, I think it, what I love about it, actually, is that it, it helps solve how we can look so different from other animals. I mean, we have, we're doing this, right? Mm -hmm. No other species is doing this. Um, how we can look so different from other animals and yet 
how we can also have evolved from them, right? Because it shows us that um, we don't have a completely separate brain from other species. We have, our brain looks a lot like a chimp brain, but the uh, expansion of our brain, the extra neurons, allowed us to innovate over these ancient parts. So those parts are still doing what they've always been doing, but now in, uh, they're being recombined and repurposed in slightly different ways to afford a whole new set of uh, innovations in sociality.